This story always arrests me. Why does God reject Saul and love David? Each time I read it, I'm fascinated that God rejected Saul. And David, who seems to have been a terrible father, took another man's wife and killed her husband, was accepted by God. So I wondered how would I explain this story to Zoe, who's sitting here on my right. In essence, Saul tried to play both sides. Samuel instructed Saul to completely destroy the Amalekite city. He disobeyed Samuel's instruction and he kept the best livestock and took Agag, the king, alive. Saul then gave a pietous excuse for what he had done. In essence, he lays the responsibility on the people and then says they brought the livestock to make a sacrifice to the Lord. David, on the other hand, maintains his childlike faith throughout. Each time he strayed, he maintained his sense of right and wrong. He knew that he had done wrong and he confessed. So God rejected Saul and instructed Samuel to anoint one of Jesse's sons. After taking the loot from the victory, when Samuel said not to, Saul blamed his men. God rejected Saul for this, and it seems relatively minor, especially when compared to the shocking behavior of some of the other anointed men like Moses, David, Jonah, Noah, and Saul. David was a mess. So what I mean by Saul is the later Saul in the New Testament. David was a mess as a king, but God did not reject him. So the Lord instructed Samuel to set apart one of Jesse's beautiful sons to become the next king of Israel. But the Lord stopped him when he wanted to um, anoint the first son. Rather, the Lord directed Samuel to the youngest son, David, who was skilled, humble. He demonstrated energetic servanthood through his shepherding. These characteristics, competence, virtue, um, and excellence are repeated through scripture. David was also courageous. He was courageous in fending off predators from his sheep, courageous in battle, and courageous in his faith. While beauty is a marker for success, virtue and fortitude in the face of persecution are rare and desirable. So the Lord reminded Samuel that the heart is paramount. A number of authors have explored the importance of transforming the heart to transform society. The universal golden rule is treat others as you want to be treated. Saul wasn't truthful. It's hard to navigate when you have the wrong map. The same is true of relationships. Telling the truth helps us to relate better to one another. Solzhenitsyn wrote, extensively on the importance of telling the truth. Lies ultimately led to the execution of tens of millions of Russians in the hellscape of the Marxist communism. So to quote Solzhenitsyn, the line separating good and evil passes through not states, nor between classes, nor between political parties either but right through every human heart and through all human hearts. And then again, if only it were all so simple, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. And who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart? Solzhenitsyn reminded his readers that telling the truth staves off evil. He actually goes so far as to say that he, because he failed to tell the truth, was responsible for Russia's descent into hell. He recalls the words of older folk when he was younger. These things have happened because we have forgotten God. And he says... Godlessness is the first step to the gulag. I grew up in the 1980s. The national broadcast at the time censored, manipulated, and broadcast deception and half-truths in the 1980s. We knew that they were telling us porky pies. 
In the 1980s and 90s, it was wonderful to read Spitting Image and Spy vs. Spy and watch the VSA, VHS tapes. Black and white people, we sat together, we laughed as we disobeyed unjust laws. I thank God for courageous men and women, priests, teachers, uncles, aunts, who rejected falsehoods and went so far as to put their lives on the line to tell the truth, to live out the truth, to stave off evil, to plant <laughs> that would grow into the increasing coming of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father, for those who tell the truth. <laughs> uh.